Hello and welcome to Modern Odyssey on BronxNet and beyond. Greetings from one of the most ancient cities in the world, Athens, the capital of Greece, the birthplace of democracy and the cradle of Western civilization. As we are in the heart of summer, we're exploring the summer experience in Greece. Crystal clear water, amazing Greek cuisine and a bright sunshine. A Greek summer, of course, is much more than that. You can experience the Hellenic culture, you can feel connected to the nature, you can celebrate the gift of life and share good moments with people you love. The adventure of life as Odyssey's epic journey to Ithaca is a symbol of timeless values and human stories worth telling. On this episode, we're going to watch some of the best moments from Modern Odyssey's episodes we've experienced so far. So let's get started. On Modern Odyssey, we care about issues that matter, timeless values, are always in the forefront as they contribute to a better quality of living. Think about it. Can you imagine a world without love? Have you thought what happens when the dark side of human nature takes place? Abuse, violence, wars, and poverty. Sometimes reality exceeds even imagination. Holocaust. Words sometimes are not enough to describe the feelings. One would wonder, or at least would hope, is there still a place for love? Are there still people who would make the difference, irrespective of religious or ethnic backgrounds? It seems that love has many shapes and forms and can be expressed in different ways. On Modern Odyssey, we have discussed about children victims of violence, with health problems, living in poverty, or threatened by poverty and missing children. We've also discussed about human stories of survival and how people risking their lives stood up to oppression and saved the lives of others. We've celebrated the gift of life through the words and songs of people who preserving timeless values and despite the difficulties they live a bright perception of life by choice. What are the biggest challenges that you face as an organization? To say no to a child that needs protection. There are also the un unaccompanied refugee children and there is a, an increased problem because these children have nowhere to go. They are locked in camps. Only in Moria right now, there are 1,500 children. Uh, some of them are not minors. They declare minors because they receive some, uh, some services extra. Uh, but still, uh, we're talking about many, many minors that they are in, in danger. We have be talking also with the government, and we have passed to them all our services. Taking into consideration that these children are in most cases uh, war survivors, what is the impact of the traumatic experiences they have faced on their health? These children are cancelling all their feelings. So yes, they are dying psychologically, and we're going to find this as societies not only Greece, because this is not a Greek problem. It's an international problem. It's an international problem, yes. Greece cannot cope with this issue. We don't have services even for the children that are living in Greece. How can you have extra services? I mean, they, they tell us at the hospitals, although they're offering fantastic services, the public sector, they see all the children the same. Are there any stories that have inspired you so far? It's how strong the children are and how they excuse their parents when they abuse them and how they they're trying to forget about things and um, and how they appreciate things Greece 
marks a historical moment, a 200 year anniversary since the outbreak of the Greek Revolution in 1821. Ένα χρόνο μετά από την έναρξη επανάσταση, συνήλθαν σε εθνοσυνέλευση και ψήφισαν ένα εξαιρετικά προοδευτικό σύνταγμα. Προέβλεπαν αβασίλευτη ε, δημοκρατία, επισμένη πάλι από την Αμερικανική Δημοκρατία και αυτό έχει πάρα πολύ μεγάλη σημασία, διότι την εποχή εκείνη μην ξεχνάμε ότι υπήρχαν μόνο τρεις πραγματικές δημοκρατίες στον κόσμο ολόκληρο, η Αμερικανική Δημοκρατία, η Βρετανική Δημοκρατία και η Ελβετική Δημοκρατία. Και θα μπορούσε κανένα να πει ότι είχαμε για την ελληνική δημοκρατία όλα τα φιλελεύθερα δημοκρατικά πνεύματα και στην Ευρώπη και στην Αμερική συγκινήθηκαν ακριβώς από αυτή την προσπάθεια μιας κούφτας Ελλήνων. The Greeks were the first one who succeeded to establish a nation state. The environment was shaped by conservative forces. The Greeks rise against the odds at the time. Η Επιτροπή στο 2021, που είναι υπεύθυνη για τους εορτασμούς της 200ης επετείου του 1821, έχει ένα πολύ σημαντικό στόχο να δούμε την ιστορία, να εμπνευστούμε από την ιστορία να δούμε το μέλλον μας. Αυτό που κάνετε τώρα εσείς με αυτή την εκπομπή είναι πάρα πολύ σημαντικό, διότι είναι ένα μήνυμα προς τους απανταχού, όχι μόνο Έλληνες, τους απανταχού φιλέλληνες θα έλεγα, ότι η χώρα μας μπορεί να πετύχει πολλά πράγματα. The 200th anniversary of the Greek Revolution and essentially the creation of modern Greece is a great um, instance. And I think uh, the greatest challenge for everybody is exactly that. By celebrating to refer to uh, Greeks everywhere uh, in the world. Kassos Island lies in the southeast Aegean Sea between two other Greek islands. Crete and Carpathos. The island's history dates back to the ancient times. Cassis Island had often been invaded by pirates, yet its people contributed to the Hellenic Revolution in 1821. The Cassians uh, never forgot uh, their history, they never forgot their religion, and they fight all the time when the Greek uh, nation needs uh, help. Cassian Brotherhood Corporation is the only Greek association who has his own uh, building uh, in, in the Bronx. We have a social club and a lot of people come and, you know, after work just to have a coffee, socialize and uh, change ideas, uh, have some snacks. They try to keep together. Our kids get together. That's the only way to stick together to stay longer to the community because it's a different, uh, different country and we try to live our dream to go one day back. The Vespina Evcaristo, who panda mas thimate, kerchete istileschimas to silogo timate. I kaso sin mikronisi kioli na to prosechu. Ota thartis ti skepsi mu, ta dio mu matia trechu. Τη ξενιτιά ο ποιητή, ή τη ξενιτιά ο ποιητή, ή τη ξενιτιά ο ποιητή, είναι φαρμακομένο. A true story about the Greek Jews is shared through the documentary film Tresoros. My parents were, were two of the 38 survivors of Castoria. For me, knowing that there was a, not only a history of the Jews in Greece, but for 2,000 years they were there. They're some of the oldest Jewish communities ever in, in history. And knowing how they perished, it uh, affected me that this was a story that had to be told. What is the message you'd like to 
to pass to the international audience? Just that um, the Jews of Greece were good people. They, were, they lived uh, in many areas of Greece in harmony with the Christians and uh, they had good lives and it was uh, wiped out during World War II. In 1943, Archbishop Damaskinos and 27 prominent leaders of organizations signed an official letter of protest in Athens, Greece, highlighting uh, the unbreakable bonds between the Christian Orthodox and Jews, identifying them jointly as Greeks. We also have the story of Zakynthos, where no Jews were killed because uh, Metropolitan Chrysostomos and Mayor uh, Lucas Carrer protected the Jews. Yes, the Nazis were so brutal to be able to stand up to a group that they knew death could have easily come to them. And these people who did it, they were the bravest that you can imagine. But the best way to fight all these fascist ideas is by providing people with education. We cannot forget all those who perished and of course on top of everything else the Holocaust to, as we say in Greek, Potexana, never again. A 90-year-old woman who, no matter the difficulties, she never gives up. Έπρεπε να γίνουν να υποκέψουν και να γίνουν Τούρκοι, να αλλάξουν τα νόματά τους. Έμενα με ορφανά. Η αδερφή μου η μικρή πέθανε, ο αδερφός μου ο μεγάλος στην κατοχή πέθανε, πήγε δούλευε να κάνω σπίτια τους γουργάρους. Until now, and we hope for many years to come, Grandmother Maria seems to have found a way to appreciate life and celebrate every single moment. Να έχουμε υγεία, ευτυχία, ειρήνη, και όλα τα καλά του κόσμου να σας δώσει ο Θεός. On Modern Odyssey, we strive our best to serve the public interest and contribute to living in a healthy, safe, well-functioned and balanced society. We examine issues that affect our daily life and perhaps our future. Besides, our actions today define our future and the next generation's present. The last two years proved to be critical for public health due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We've discussed about the COVID-19 pandemic and the controlling of the spread, emphasizing on the case of Greece. At the same time, We've explored the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on democracy, human rights and technology, the politics of pandemics. What's really at stake for democracy? What ethical challenges may the world face with artificial intelligence? And what is the role of thought leaders in times of crisis? <music>
please share your personal evaluation of the coronavirus pandemic or lessons learned so far? Very simply and concisely. First, the development of uh, personal responsibility regarding not only self-protection measures, but also other fellow men. Second, changing or adaptation, adapt of our behavior, mentality and attitude on everyday life in appliance with health hygiene measures in such an emergency condition. Third, prioritizing health and life over economic harm. And finally, for the creation of a safety culture in everyday life. I'd like to ask you if there is a stigma around coronavirus disease and if you have any advice on how to handle it. Yes, dear Despina, this is a socially and ethically pivotal question. People infected with coronavirus need not to feel as a stigmatized person, but as a person that may be part of the solution against uh, SARS-CoV-2. That is, their health adventure may help scientists either to solve the current mysteries of the novel virus or to help other seriously infected people to recover by giving their antibodies using the convalescent plasma method. An advantage of these people is that they do not need to take the vaccine because they will have natural immunity. Of course, there is a problem with when facing a person currently or previously infected, taking physical distance and wearing a mask or gloves make them feel unwanted. However, we need to explain to them that there is nothing personal but just prevention. For this crisis, what does unite us? This pandemic may be an opportunity for our world and for all of us to express our solidarity, our empathy, our cooperation and stand out of the value of human life over profit and to develop, develop of course, a safety culture. According to 2020 report by Research Institute Freedom House, democracy is in crisis around the world as governments take advantage of the coronavirus pandemic to tighten controls and conduct human rights abuses. Pandemics in the past have influenced uh, politics and indeed they have influenced politics uh, now. This pandemic, will it change democracy? It may. Little and big dictators all over the world uh, basically seek excuses to expand their powers. One profession that hasn't followed the trend of telework is politicians. If they went to uh, also telework, this might give people the idea that uh, why do we need politicians then? Why don't we all uh, legislate? You have mentioned that we're living the age of universal surveillance. When people talk about the age of surveillance, what is really meant is that uh, both governments and big companies take our data and get uh, immense value out of that. This asymmetry is uh, a fundamental breach of fairness, democracy, and actually basic economics. The idea has been proposed and is gaining ground that uh, the big companies who uh, collect and use this data from people should uh, pay back. One question raised between researchers is who is going to control an ethical artificial intelligence? We have extremely powerful artificial intelligence engines right now. They don't deserve our blind trust. These machines make mistakes. What is the role of the opinion leaders, especially in times of crisis? You are asking perhaps the most important question of the year. I will be unequivocal about this. The role is to listen to the science. On Modern Odyssey, we love arts and we're looking for people who stand out for the quality of their work. We had the opportunity to discuss with accomplished artists from the field of music, fine arts and acting. We visited the actual places where they have expressed their talents. We talked about people who became a source of inspiration and left their mark in the arts worldwide until nowadays.
Our guest today is a Brazilian of Greek descent whose music career led him to New York. He has core music for films and TV shows, and he has worked with executive producer Steven Spielberg and directors such as Robert De Niro and Denzel Washington. He's been twice nominated for Primetime Emmy Awards, and he's the composer of the film Dark Waters. I fell in love with music through the music of the films and the films of my childhood, 80s films, really. Spielberg movies and, and, uh, and also films like Blade Runner and Chariots of Fire, who happen to have a great, the great Greek composer of Angelis. I find music to be a very, very spiritual thing. And, and when people are watching a movie and they are moved by the movie and the music, feeling like you're being part of, of somebody's emotional experience. Stories in general are, how, are, are what inspire me. I, I've always been very interested. I remember even before I was into music, I loved stories. And I think a lot of kids like stories. They like to be told stories. And I think it's one of the ways that we let our imagination run. Yeah. And, um, and even before I, you know, I started, I was, I was able to write film, film music. I used to write music sometimes based on books that I, that I read. I find walking around the streets mm. of New York, taking the subway, all of that to be very inspiring. At first, the mm -hmm. biggest source of influence for me was musical films and, and then Brazilian music too. But I feel like over time, American music, American classical music and jazz and all of that has become just as much a part of who I am uh, since I've been here now for most of my life. I always believe that with goodwill and generosity, the best things come in life. And, and I feel like I try to bring that value to my workplace every day. You know, luck is important, but you have to be prepared for when those opportunities come. Our guest today is Miltiadis Afentoulis, a multi-awarded iconographer of Greek descent who lives in the United States over the last years. I'm a very tired because I had Vasily Afentouli, the big geographer. Εμένα η ζωή μου και θα έλεγα το παιχνίδι μου ήταν να ζωγραφίζω Αγίους από μικρό παιδί. Και έχω δημιουργήσει μια δική μου τεχνοτροπία, τηρώντας πάντα τους Βυζαντινούς κανόνες. Perhaps one of the most impressive achievements is that he makes large scale murals. One of the churches he decorates in New York is St. Peter the Apostle Greek Orthodox Church in the Bronx. Επειδή η εκκλησία αυτή είναι του Αγίου Πέτρου, βάλαμε πάνω τον Άγιο Πέτρο και Παύλο και όλους τους μαθητές του Χριστού που είναι οι Άμπελος, οι 12 μαθητές του Ιησού Χριστού. Πραγματικά έδωσα το καλύτερο που μπορούσα, ε, σαν δείγμα εργασίας μου, αλλά και την τιμή που μου κάνανε να μου αναθέσουν αυτό το έργο. In an attempt to contribute to the preservation and spreading of the Byzantine iconography, he teaches pro bono Byzantine iconography classes. Έχω κάνει πάρα πολλά μαθήματα εδώ στην Αμερική. Τα παιδιά έχουν το τέτοιο ενδιαφέρον και τέτοια χαρά που μου δίνει μια μεγάλη χαρά αυτό ότι η Βυζαντινή Αγιογραφία και η Βυζαντινή Παράδοση δεν θα πεθάνει εύκολα. In 2016, he received an honorary award and a medallion by the Club of UNESCO of Pyrrhus and Islands for his great contribution to culture as well as for the preservation and promotion of the traditional unique Byzantine art to younger generation and for his dedication to the Byzantine art and it spread internationally. Κυρίως σε περίοδους κρίσεως, οι καλλιτέχνες εμπνέονται και κάνουν τα καλύτερα τους έργα. Και θα ήταν πάρα πολύ ωραίο να δίνουν τη δυνατότητα σε νέους καλλιτέχνες, γιατί οι καταξιωμένοι δεν έχουν ανάγκη, να παρουσιάζουν το έργο τους. Today, we're going to make a tribute to the Greek-American director, producer, writer and actor, Elias Kazan. Uh, the Actor Studio itself was the organization that Elias Kazan founded together with two other people, uh, Robert Lewis and Sir Crawford, in 1947. The leadership of the Actor Studio in 1994 decided to make more uh, available this very exclusive way of working and that's how the Actors Studio Drama School was created, which is the academic branch of the Actors Studio. 
Along with his co-founders of the Actors Studio, he introduced the so-called method acting. Elie Kazan was a member of the group theatre. In that uh, group theatre, the method uh, was um, uh, created and developed. And when uh, the group theatre collapsed, he created the Act Studio, so that work could continue. He is well known for directing films such as A Streetcar Named Desire with Marlon Brando and East of Eden with James Dean. If we see all the films of Elie Kazan, all the subjects were uh, dealing with social issues, political issues, personal issues. So he was a very deep uh, and serious director. He was a thinker. His history and his past and the struggle of his family to come in another land uh, obviously influenced him, but he had it in him though. He won two Oscar awards as Best Director, an honorary Oscar, three Tony Awards and four Golden Globes. He left behind him an enormous tradition. He's a sea of, of information. He's a treasure, actually. The New York Times described Elias Kazan as one of the most honored and influential directors in Broadway and Hollywood history. Kazan was the most um, capable director uh, of all times to get out of the actors the best thing that they had. So that was Bronxness dedication to some of the best moments of Modern Odyssey's episodes. We hope you enjoyed this special episode and if you'd like to take a break, this is a great time to experience the Greek summer. Before I greet you until next time, let me introduce you to some of the younger generations of the Greek Americans living in Athens, Stephanos and Anastasia. Happy summer! <laughs> <laughs> From Athens with love, we wish you all happy summer. Kalokalokeri. Yasas. <laughs>